knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Before we can learn about archaeological practices, we need to look at the field of archaeology itself. As archaeologists are humans, the very thing they study, they must be careful not to insert their own biases. Archaeological theory refers to the conceptual framework archaeologists use to interpret past peoples. A good understanding of this theory helps archaeologists better align their concepts of the past with a less biased approach. However, archaeology has changed a lot since its inception, and therefore so has the theory. Understanding past archaeological theory is important if we want to use sources of information gathered by earlier studies. Knowing what conceptual framework an archaeologist was using is critical in interpreting the information in a modern context. The first stage of archaeological theory is called cultural history. Starting in the 1860s, the theory had a great deal of influence from Darwinian evolution. Cultural evolution was established as a concept from this influence. This includes the idea that human cultures evolve similarly to organisms. Selection played a part in this concept. More fit societies survived, and less fit societies went extinct. Fitness was usually a society's technological progress, will as a people, or something similar. To a cultural history theorist, human history was basically a game of Sid Meier's civilization. This explained how Europeans were able to establish themselves all over the world. To employ this theory, archaeologists identified and defined thousands of cultures. An archaeological culture is a group of people in a region with very similar material remains, such as similar building practices, pottery, and burials. To a cultural history theorist, these cultures interacted and competed in a similar way as organisms, either adapting or going extinct. From this idea came the concept of the evolution of societies from a band, to a tribe, to a chiefdom, and lastly a state, each society growing in complexity and fitness. By the 1950s, it was clear that this view of human history was too narrow. Human societies don't compete like animals or plants. They are ideas, something intangible. They do change and evolve, but not in predictable ways, and especially not in ways determined by fitness. While we still use cultures as a way to define groups with similar material remains, we don't see them interacting in the way conceived by cultural history. In response to the narrow and problematic worldview of cultural history, archaeologists created processual archaeology. Seeing how biased many theories of cultural history were, processual archaeologists emphasized being impartial. Ideas from hard sciences, such as the strict use of the scientific method in interpreting material remains, were put into place. Hypotheses were made, tested, revised, accepted, or rejected, and theories were created from them. Processual archaeology also attempted to refocus archaeology to studying humans, rather than the study of cultures defined by archaeologists themselves. This included decoupling the idea of a culture and ethnic group. It became clear that just because archaeologists thought two groups had similar material remains, they didn't act as the same ethnic group or political organization as had been previously envisioned. However, many archaeologists also found processual archaeology to be problematic. One of the main problems they saw was in how the scientific method was implemented. While they recognized the importance of trying to be unbiased, they argued that it was impossible to be completely impartial in archaeology, and archaeological work shouldn't be presented in a way such that certain data leads to unchallengeable outcomes. This conceptual framework is called post-processual archaeology, which gained popularity in the 1980s. There typically are no experiments that can be repeated in archaeology which lead to a predictable set of results, like in chemistry or physics. Post-processualists argued that in the study of past humans, we will always impart some of our biases, and it's important to acknowledge that. This has led some archaeologists to accept multiple pasts. There is no exact way things happened in history. Think of our modern world and ask two people in different political parties what they think American culture is and the important events that led to its formation. You will likely hear two very different answers that lead to very different interpretations of American culture. Is one of these interpretations more correct? 
And this is the case when looking at a living culture. Trying to understand ancient cultures from our worldview will only exacerbate this problem. Therefore, multiple past proponents conclude that there is no single correct interpretation of the past. This doesn't mean that any interpretation of the past is valid. The interpretation must be based on observations, be able to explain all current data, and survive peer review, and there should still be a prevailing view on most concepts, time periods, and peoples. Modern archaeological theory builds on all previous theories. Cultures are still defined in the manner of cultural history, but without the lens of cultural competition. Processual archaeology is still used in making hypotheses and theories in interpreting remains with the scientific method, but these interpretations aren't seen as unfalsifiable outcomes. Modern archaeology also places importance on fixing centuries of unethical practice toward descendants of people archaeologists were studying. Past archaeological theory has often treated artifacts and sites as data points rather than objects of cultural heritage to a group. We will discuss archaeological ethics in more detail a bit later in the series, but for now, since we are familiar with archaeological theory, let's dive into methodology. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.